worst lines in fiction. For the first month of Ricardo and Felicity's affair, they greeted one another at every stolen rendezvous with a kiss. A lengthy ravenou kiss. Ricardo lapping and sucking at Felicity's mouth as if she were a giant caged, cage-mounted water bottle and he were the world's thirstiest gerbil. <laughs> I'm all out of salami. <laughs> I don't think you're that good. That was me! Ah, that was me, it. baby! I'm, I'm playing that clip! <laughs> I don't think you were that good. Cut to it was me, baby! Let's go! <laughs> welcome, welcome everyone to the Tutor Realm Podcast. My name is Richard. My name is Austin. And today we're going over the 20 worst lines in fiction. And we're doing this a little bit fun because we have three different types of lines, okay? We have lines that Richard and I both came up with. Mm -hmm. We have lines that come from this contest that happens yearly. It's called the Bulwer Lit in Fiction Contest where people submit lines that are purposely supposed to be horribly bad. And then third, we have books from we have lines from real books that we think are bad. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole game here is Rich, you came prepared with 10 lines. I mm -hmm. came prepared with 10 lines. We have them mixed up between the contest, the fake contest, ones we created, and ones from real books, and we didn't tell the other person. So we're hearing these lines for the first time just as you are. And the whole yep. game here is after we say a line, the other person has to guess: is it a real book? Is it a fake one made from the contest, or is that one you came up with? Yeah, so that'll be fun. Try and play along. See if you, it, before we reveal it in the video, try and go down the comments below. See if you guessed which one is our lines that we wrote ourselves. Exactly. We the reason this book, this whole idea was inspired was twofold. One, a commenter. Thank you so much. We'll put your name up here. Thank you for suggesting it and also our buddy in real life holden thank you holden he he told us about this contest the bulwer lit in fiction contest and this this is the official rules of the contest according to the official rules the prize for winning the contest is a pittance the 2008 winner won 250 dollars. the 2014 winners page said the grand prize got about 150 <laughs> and the current prize as of 2023 is a cheap certificate of bragging rights Nice. So <laughs> the contest started in 1982 from this professor from San Jose University, uh, Professor Scotty e. Rice, and he made this whole contest based on the opening of Paul Clifford, the novel that started with A Dark and Stormy Night that mm. is used as the tropish, horrible opening line. And that's where this whole thing spawned. If now we're going to have people submit these awful lines and award them. Yeah, and also comment down below your best worst opening line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to read them. It'll be fun for us. Now, just to clarify, when we were going through the uh, different s submissions in this contest, mm -hmm. I took all of the odd years, and then Austin took all the even years. That way, I have not read any of the lines from the contest Likewise. that Austin has been picked from. Yeah, so I have all of them from like 2022, 2000, 1996, all the even years, and you didn't read those at all. I did not touch them. And those. I did not touch the odds. So yep. th this is going to be great. Yep. Be great. Okay. Do you want to start first or me? What do you think? You want I want to start first. Okay. Okay. I, I can't. I'm ready. I'm ready. And I have to guess from there. Yep. All right. The townsfolk were approaching the castle holding flaming sticks ready to express their displeasure with the monster that the scientist within had supposedly created from various cemeteries in the area and as the crowd got within the sight of the castle blood-curdling screams filled the night because the flaming sticks they carried were too short and the flames were now burning their hands <laughs> that's got to be the contest you got it right. Yeah, that's, that's a funny one. So, see, un unironically, that's a good opening line. <laughs> well, okay, that's, it's not well written. No, no, deliberately no. Deliberately so. It's a run-on. It's, yes. it's, it's ridiculous. The that's what makes it great. <laughs> it's, it's if Terry Pratchett was a worse writer. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's exactly, it's way too many words. It, okay, so why is that line bad? Like, I'm, I'm, also, I'm sorry for not giving people a chance to guess on their own. I, I just, that you felt contesty to me. I, yeah, yeah. I'll give pause next time. Okay. Yeah. But why do you think that line is terrible? <laughs> well, the run on and going over and over about the sticks. And uh, honestly, 
the part that made it good and funnier was it ran on so long that the sticks melted down to burning your hand made it a funny ending. I didn't <laughs> I didn't know where the sentence was going and ending there was satisfying. Yeah. But it was a run on. It talked about things several times. You could have said that same thing much shorter. <laughs> but still it's yeah. hilariously. Good, by the way, bad, bad to way. give credit, of course, yeah. it's a line written by Randy Blanton in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Oh, amazing. And I feel so bad because I didn't write who they were from. Oh, shoot. You didn't give credit. No, I will in the description. I, I will. All these oh, will okay. be in the description below. That'll be my Good. saving grace. <laughs> that was the benefit one. of you editing. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to give my first line? I want to give it. Okay. Give it to me. Here it is. For the first month of Ricardo and Felicity's affair, they greeted one another at every stolen rendezvous with a kiss. A lengthy Ravenau kiss. Ricardo lapping and sucking at Felicity's mouth as if she were a giant caged, cage-mounted water bottle and he were the world's thirstiest gerbil. <laughs> I'm going to go with contest. Thank God, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't come up with that one. <laughs> uh, okay, why is it bad, but also why did it make you laugh? <laughs> For the same reasons of the imagery, it was uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go again. It was lapping and sucking at Felicity's mouth as if she were a giant cage-mounted water bottle. <laughs> and you were the world's thirstiest <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of good. <laughs> that's It's uh, good in a terrible way. I, I, that's the thing. This is so... Oh. Subjected. Like, okay, <laughs> technically the worst opening line is just like utter you nonsense. You can't read it. You can't understand yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. This is trying to be the worst whilst also being comprehensible. Un- yeah. Yeah. Not <laughs> too grammatically wrong. Like mm-hmm. objectively wrong. But no, the beginning half is actually just really long, silly, and boring. Like, mm-hmm. Ron, like, what, what was that? Like, you mentioned the kiss, like, three times. with a kiss, a lengthy Ravano kiss. You know, repeated that. He was the same kiss twice yeah. in a row. So, that's part of why it's bad. Is I guess most of them is too many words used to say a very simple thing. Yeah. Which, God, that's what we do. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this was to compare it to the 2010 winner. Oh, okay, the winner good. of the 2010 competition for the Bowler Litton contest. It's a good line. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, what's your next slide? My next line here is, I scowl with frustration at myself in the mirror. Oh my God, I know this is a real book. How do you know? I know this because when I was looking at real books, that came up. So that's, (laughs) I I was like, is that from um, Twilight or is it from... Um, oh, Close. Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades, 50 Shades of, Grey. of Grey. I knew because when I was looking up real books to find, it's a terrible that, line. That one kept coming up. So I scowl with frustration at myself in the in mirror. The mirror. <laughs> <laughs> kind of reminds me of the title of the movie, like um, the Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. <laughs> like just yeah. the, of the, of the yeah, It's yeah. just so repetition. It's too many words. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I totally didn't read this book, and that's why I knew didn't oh, know what it was. Of course, that's I, why you no, you looked no, it up no, for no, research. No, no, I I I I, I, sw- I, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my fifth read now. <laughs> it's, it keep, every episode I've read it once more time. Yeah, <laughs> but I definitely saw that. So that's a little bit of cheating. Since that is a little cheating. I, I saw it when I was researching. What am I supposed to do? Well, yeah, but, mm, yeah, well, yeah. You know. but that why that's a bad line just because it's saying the same thing in a rather short sentence too. It's too long, and it's a very short sentence. Yeah, that's a hard thing to do. <laughs> I scowl with frustration at, at myself, myself in, in the, the mirror. mirror. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> How would you write that better? Like, take that sentence and actually make it a good opening sentence. I scowled in the mirror. Uh, or maybe something of... If it's trying to still I, say the same thing. I, I, I face... I faced my own scowl in the morning or something like it, something more active looking. So what looked back at me was a, a scowl, scowl of yeah. frustration. Maybe, maybe so, I, I would even say just, I scowled in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, it's, you can't do much else with that line. <laughs> it's, I scowled in the mirror or 
I frustratingly scowled at the mirror. I think the scowl gives you the frustration, though. You know, in a True. sense. So I think that's why it's so bad. Is I scowl with, with frustration, frustration at myself, myself because you're saying mirror. twice the scowl and frustration is the same thing, and at myself and mirror is the same thing. Because don't need who else is it other than you in the mirror? Anyways, that's why it's so repetitive. Yeah. Uh, no, you're correct. On that. So <laughs> that that's. The competition was also a little bit inspired. Remember, was it Terry Goodkind's opening line of, it was an odd-looking vine? Oh, yeah, that also but, inspired us to make this. Because yeah. we were at the bookstore, and I was, I picked it off the shelf just to, so, to see that first line again. Yeah, like, yeah that is awful. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> and when I was researching as well, people were comment, said that was one of the bad lines. And mm -hmm. then the comments were all going, and it gets worse from there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready for... It's, <laughs> yeah, it's a well-sold series. Oh, yeah, it is. It made a good amount of money. Yeah, what do you that, think about that? What do you want to tell the folks? Should they, should they go buy that? It just shows me that... You know, the people don't know what they want. They don't know what's good. And what does that mean, Rich? Democracy is cringe. Man, that saying teeters my totter. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you're running with it. You made that up because I said a phrase and you... It's not true. If you go back in the logs, I said teeter my totter before you said democracy is cringe. No, it isn't. Go, go back. Roll a clip. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've got 10 entries each. That was your second entry. Yep. So here's my second entry. Okay. Go ahead. The young man and young woman's love was unexplainable, much like a stick in the winter after a snowstorm blows snow onto the fallen tree appendage and makes it disappear underneath that snow until the stick is no longer, no longer explainable because you can't see it. That's either you or the contest. I'm leaning toward contest. Which one's your final guess? Uh, I'm going with contest. It was me! Damn, it, it was me! me! <laughs> I wrote a bad line. Oh, I'm, I shouldn't be proud of that. <laughs> it's so it's so awful. <laughs> it's so abysmally that awful. That means so much, Rich. Thank you. <laughs> you know what terrible is. <laughs> I know what not to do. I just don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's half the battle. <laughs> The, you want to read that to me one more yeah, time. Yeah. The young man and young woman's love was unexplainable, much like a stick in the winter after a snowstorm blows snow onto the fallen tree appendage and makes it disappear underneath that snow until the stick is no longer explainable because you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> so just g explain way too much. <laughs> Several times over. Just to make sure you really understand what I'm going for, right? It's a stick. <laughs> Remember, it's a stick in the snow. A snow stick <laughs> that you can't see anymore because the snow stick is covered in snow. That's why you can't explain love. That's why love's unexplainable. <laughs> so Nothing I'm, better than I a joke that's explained. Exactly. I ran with an analogy that was over-explained and also sometimes authors, I've done this when I, I'm not an author. I've done this when I'm writing stuff. I want to be an author. But I've done this when writing stuff of you try to look up synonyms to words mm -hmm. and sometimes it comes off awkward like tree appendage. Throws you like why? that's an awful description, and then yeah. I, so I used stick, tree appendage, and then stick again, just to make it weirder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you didn't get that one. <laughs> Honestly, you could submit that one. That's a good one. <laughs> thanks, thanks. <laughs> All right, what's your third one? My third one is upon his death. Van Helsing wrote, "This vexes me still today, with no mirror able to cast his cursed reflection." How did Dracula comb his hair so perfectly every time and achieve such a clean, close shave that brought the babes in truckloads? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So a Dracula <laughs> spinoff. <laughs> I'm going to guess this could be you read Dracula. So this could be you or it could be the contest. I don't. Is it some re weird actual book that's a inspired because it's the public domain now dracula is in it's, the public domain i'm gonna guess contest you would be right it is oh, a contest yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> that could have been all three though yeah that could have been any of them because dracula is public domain yeah it but, could have been okay so that that was contest what, what year was that who's that from oh that that is from donald j hicks jr in manchester uh, Manchester, New Jersey. Okay. I don't have the year. I didn't. We'll have it in the, all the description. So I below. picked the year. You got the author. We, I got the we both had half the information. Yeah, all the information will be down below. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Now, okay. What about that is terrible? It didn't make me laugh, which made it worse. <laughs> True. I, I think it is a little funny. Of you know, yeah. 
Yeah, all the babes. Yeah. yeah. Because the situation yes. is funny. Yes. But the actual lines are not particularly funny. It's right. tr- it's like it's trying to be funny, but which makes it doesn't it land. Did the job. It did the job. It, it's terrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially like upon his death, Van Helsing really gets just kind of bland. I think he's yeah. already dead. Yeah. Add some suspense in there. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> okay. Here's my third one. Okay. My third entry. Go ahead. I knew she was trouble the second she walked into my 24-hour deli, laundromat, and detective agency, and after dropping a load of unmentionables in one of the heavy-duty machines, a mistake that would soon turn deadly, she turned to me, asking for two things. Find her missing husband and make her salami on rye with spicy mustard, breaking into tears when I told her I couldn't help. I was fresh out of salami. I'm pretty sure this is the contest. This is the contest. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this was the most recent winner. Oh, nope. Sorry. 2022. Not uh, okay. 2023. I couldn't read. This was the most recent I could possibly read was 2022 <laughs> contest winner. But what's bad about that? What made you chuckle? It just feels like a real pulpy, a real pulpy story that was handled even more poorly. The melodrama to extreme. Yeah. That th- take the salami on the side. <laughs> So ridiculous. I'm all out of I'm all out of salami. <laughs> it's the it's the like I'm here to kick ass and make sandwiches and I'm all out of salami. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great line. That's, that should be a good opening line. It's terrible. Actually. Do you wanna so we've been reading some that's three bad lines in a row. Do you wanna take a quick book off the shelf? Just read a good line real quick. Okay. Like what about well, pick one, anyone. Dragon Bone, Tad Williams. Go okay. ahead. Just, a good author. Just to get us, just to get us to, uh, like, hey, here's what a normal line should be, right? <laughs> On this day of days, there was an unfamiliar stirring deep inside the dozing heart of the Hayholt, in the castle's bewildering warren of quiet passages and overgrown, ivy choked courtyards, and the monks' holes and damp, shadowed chambers. It's a, sim- it's a simple thing of just well describing the scene. It's not going for any characters. It's just trying to put you in the, zone. the world. Yeah, put exactly. you in the world. What kind of thing you're getting to? You're understanding. You're going to get some more heavily flower, you know, purple yeah. descriptions. That's what the book you're going to go for. Exactly. A good, a good opening line. It's not going to be heavy with action. It's no, not no, gonna, no. But you're going to be immersed into a fantastical world. And the best thing a good opening line could do is set you for the tone and what to expect. And obviously, that first that. chapter can it set you up properly. Mm-hmm. Honestly, the salami line did set me up for a nice humory, detective, <laughs> melodramatic book. So it kind of accomplished that. I can see it as a good parody book. Yeah, like I there's. Can see that. You, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of parody books on the detective genre. Right. The whole private eye thing. Like, what makes Princess Bride such an amazing movie? Yeah, it's a great parody. What makes Monty Python so funny? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, something that deeply understands the subject and then. Goes forward, which is what makes Terry Pratchett a damn genius. Terry yeah. Pratchett's these are absurdist parodies, in a sense, of fantasy books. But because he's so appreciative of fantasy and understands it so deeply, it comes off as such a great emulation of what fantasy is. Just like is imagine that what uh, makes a bad first line is it fails to understand the genre. Exactly, where it takes that. it at a surface level where like oh that's what someone who doesn't understand fantasy or sci-fi would think fantasy or sci-fi is about just and that's like, what makes it bad just like a bad imitation so mm-hmm. jamie fox being an amazing impersonator mm-hmm. and these people that get the inflection of the person and they they can give you the vocals they can give you the movements when jamie fox is impersonating you that's a freaking compliment because he understands you well enough to give a good impersonation yeah. So there's a certain appreciation that comes with imitating art. Where that from, it goes from imitation into emulation. That's where mm. it makes it great because you're taking it, and Terry Pratchett takes death, a concept in books, and then makes that into both a funny and also surreal and intense and meaningful and does everything great with it. <laughs> Just like a funny line or making fun of a genre. You have to know it well enough to make fun of it or else your joke isn't funny enough. Yeah, I think when people, how people should take offense to a joke in general, don't. They're jokes. Better, best for you to move along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't take offense to jokes. However, a lot of it comes from where you can feel more offenses. You feel misunderstood. Mm-hmm. I think that's where a lot of it comes from is someone who feels offended by a joke is under the assumption that that person doesn't understand them. 
Yeah. And that's why it hurts because they don't get them and they're making a mockery at something they don't understand themselves right. versus a joke that the per it's at someone's expense, but it's coming from a place of, Oh, that person understands me very well. There's a hidden truth in jokes. It's not real, but it's based on a truthful premise. Yeah, exactly. Or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What is your fourth one, Rich? My fourth one. Mm-hmm. Commander Shepard checked his data sphere for confirmation as he sighed and pointed his laser blaster at the rotund alien before him. The creature cried out, It was only a game of Globgorp! Shepard replied, The Supreme Chancellor sends his regards. (laughs) This, oh man, I'm very conflicted with this one. Because you're such a sci-fi nerd. I can totally <laughs> see you going globber cook. I can, oh. Oh, uh, hold on. It's not a real book. I'm going, it's not a real book. Mm-hmm. I'm right there. Yeah. Okay. It's either you or it's the contest. What are the Down below, what do you guys think? Uh, this is, I'll know. I'll know. This is the first one. I'm going to take a look. Okay. Contest or Richard? <sighs> Down below, I want to see if people get it. I'm going Contest. Is it you? Was I wrong? I'm going contest. It was me! No! <laughs> Glob, I knew that stupid Glob guy. God damn it. I should have went with that. I feel good that it's part <laughs> yeah, of the contest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> damn it. Read it again because now that I know it's yours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. Good job. Yeah. yeah I, I like this. It's a lot yeah, yeah. of just how stupid oh, it yeah. is. And just sends the regards. <laughs> Just <laughs> allusions to different like yeah, yeah, mediums yeah. and like I pulled from Mass Effect, just Game like, of Thrones. <laughs> Thro- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. So say it again. Say it again. Commander Shepard checked his data sphere for confirmation as he sighed and pointed his laser blaster at the rotund alien before him. The creature cried out, "It was only a game of Globgorp." <laughs> Shepard replied, "The Supreme Chancellor sends his regards." <laughs> Oh, it's so silly. <laughs> also, you love how it's like you know, Commander Shepard, the Supreme Chancellor. Just, yep. I don't know. I, I had fun making it very stupid. Honestly, making the line was, making these lines were fun. Yeah. It, it Honestly, was... we could do a, just a whole video of us making the lines and having fun with it. Okay. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> good good line. Tricked me. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Good one. Okay. My, my fourth one? Yeah. Okay. Here it is. I've been scared to have sex with Stacy ever since I discovered her vagina was haunted. <laughs> That's the contest. 100% is the contest. Has to be. And at, by the time, every, every time we finish, try to pause on our voice here and see if you guys can guess I'll back at home. Better. I'll do better, but oh, before book, you give yeah, it, yeah. do you guys agree with me? Like, Co- is me it a contest? Second. It's a real book. It's a real book? It's a real book. It's what co- is... Oh, hold on. Now I'm curious. Like, what is, what by the definition of haunted? How yeah. can a vagina be haunted? It's, In well, what context? Well, you know what the title of the book is? Does it speak? The, the title of the book is The Haunted Vagina by Carlton Mellick the third. And Mellick the n- no third. joke, this, this, this whole thing, yeah. it, it has like a 3.17 on Goodreads. This is a good amount of reviews as oh. well. It is, uh, so here's the blurb for it, okay? Wonderful. It's difficult to love a, love a woman whose vagina is a gateway to the world of the dead. <laughs> <laughs> Steve is madly in love with his eccentric girlfriend, Stacy. Unfortunately, their sex life has been suffering as of late because Steve is worried about the odd noises <laughs> that have been coming from Stacy's pubic region. She says that her vagina is haunted. She doesn't think it's that big of a deal. Steve, on the other hand, completely disagrees. <laughs> When a living corpse climbs out of her during an awkward night of sex, Stacy learns that her vagina is actually a doorway to the another world. She persuades Steve to climb inside of her to explore this strange new place. But once inside, Steve finds it difficult to return, especially once he meets an oddly attractive woman named Fig who lives within the lonely, haunted world between Stacy's legs. I was uncomfortable reading that. That was, that's a toughie. That's a tough one. That sounds like it's high potential for one of the worst books ever written. <laughs> Review coming soon on Two to Ramble. This has, this has 3,786 ratings. Oh. So it's been read. 
it's been read 3.17 on Goodreads, and the top commenter says, it's a no for me, dog. <laughs> 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 and then another uh, another person, Nina, uh, that, that review is by Chelsea. And then another one, Nina, she says, so I have a project called What the Actual F Wednesday, where I read the weirdest <laughs> of the weird, <laughs> and then has a review on it. Oh. I could not believe that was an opening line to a book. That's a real book. You said your first I feel reaction. like I have to own this book. <laughs> just, I have a desire to, like, just keep it. It's the... Someone asked me, what's the weirdest book you have? And right you, there. Oh, right there. I, that, there. That, that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is like you instantly went, no, contest. It's contest for sure. It has to be. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Myself. I know you wouldn't write that. You couldn't write that no. good of a bad line. No. I've been scared to have sex with Stacey since I discovered her vagina was haunted. That's just, first off, I am intrigued. <laughs> It's I'm, direct. It's it's direct okay. enough where I it, it's it, so in your face. I thought it was more of an like analogy or allegory for nope. men being uncomfortable nope. with like the woman's body nope. of like oh it, it, like I don't know like men go like ah periods gross or like ah eh, sounds like it no nope, literally haunted. Oh okay. Yep. Maybe it is an allegory. Maybe it's deeper than I thought. Can you lighten us up with the next one you got, please? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. I'll, I'll try and help you. Thank out. you. Thank you. <laughs> Right. Her mind racing through the hasty protocol briefing she received shortly before launch 14 months ago, Commander Winona Begston, the first Earther to lead a delegation to the Nardoz system, regarded the alien commander who was now undressing her with his eyes, which wouldn't have been that big of a deal, except that his Nardozian... His being a Nardozian. What the hell? The officer's four eyes were ten feet long and prehensile. God. Okay, I'm gonna give a pause. Let people guess at home. Then I'm gonna. My knee-jerk reaction is contest. You would be correct. Yeah, <laughs> because that that <laughs> screams contest with the run on and the what the hell is going on. Yeah. Yeah, you were right. It is contest. The the weird jargon. It, that's weirder jargon than actual sci-fi jargon has, too. It managed to pull that off where you read your sci-fi book and go, oh, I'm ready for some world building. I'm ready to get... Like, that's that's and, another level. Yeah. Oh, just the officer's four eyes were 10 Un feet long and prehensile. Her. Prehensile, yeah. Meaning literally undressing her. Yeah. Un yeah. It's, yeah. It's just stupid and weird. Thanks for lightening the tone there. That was, yeah, that was better. So. That was better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's next one. That was your fifth one, right? Uh, or, yes. Yeah, okay. Here's my fifth one, okay? Mm -hmm. The notion that they were no longer... Let me restart that. The notion that they would no longer be a couple dashed Helen's hopes and scrambled her thoughts, not unlike the time her sleeve caught the edge of the open egg carton and the contents hit the floor like fragile little things hitting cold tiles. More pitiable because they were the expensive organic brown eggs from free-range chickens, and one of them clearly had double yolks entwined in one sack just the way Helen and Richard used to be. I think that's you. You think that's me? I think that's you. And it's really good and terrible. <laughs> that should be in the contest. I, I believe it should be the contest and it would be the winner. What's your actual answer? It's you. That was the contest. Damn it. <laughs> so you got two wrong so far. I got one wrong. We're keeping tally. <laughs> We're two and one wrong. Okay. <laughs> that was the 2004 runner up. That's just so hilariously overexplained and rambling. Yeah. It, kind that of like is, the one I came up with where it was overexplained and That's rambling. kind of what I was yeah. getting at. Yeah, it, yeah. I just like, I love how it rambled and then tied itself together somehow in the yeah, end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it went on this huge thing you didn't need to explain in the middle, then went back to, well, that's, they were like two eggs in one. And a that's couple why in the door. Yeah. Couple. It's like, oh. <laughs> somehow coherent. <laughs> so, yeah. Again, what you said earlier, they can't be totally understandable. The worst line is, yeah. that's the worst line. Because what, what the hell is that, right? Yeah. But then this is actually a comprehensible bad line. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right, <laughs> uh, what is your, you got number six. What number six. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. I'm taking this very seriously. I'm, oh, I'm trying to get this best. right. If there's a snake in your boot, you dump it out by the creek. And if it's got feathers, you dump it out in the creek. And if it's talking at you, you dump it out gently and apologize and keep an eye out for the mama dragon. 
and tarn nation. These city slickers don't know the first thing about staying alive out here. <laughs> okay, people guess at home because I'm going with, I'm pretty confident this is contest as well. Oh, don't tell me I'm wrong. Don't give me that look. I said that confident. I said that too confidently. Was it content? Did, don't tell me it was you. It was contest. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> if that was you, oh, that would have been... Okay, I felt contest. I, I thought that could have been a real book. That seems like a bad line that could be in a book. I could see it. I was saying, if I had a second one, I would say real book. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't me. No, no, no. <laughs> the, the city slickers and the... The city... The, and tarnation, these city slickers. <laughs> the snake... It explains the snake three times. If there's a snake in your I'll, boots... I'll be honest. You could cut that last part out and it would be awful. Shorten it just a smidge. But just that the three steps of if there's a snake in your boot, dump it out by the creek, in the creek... You apologize to it and right. wait, hope its mama doesn't come. Because there is a good three X structure to that. Well, that there's three a good, X structure. No, the, there's a the good three, first line. The in three there. point repetition that goes duh duh duh. That authors use a lot to make something mm. have effect. Yeah, that has that. There, there's a good line in there. Yes. It's just not that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's most of these actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My next one. Yeah. My number six here. Okay. The waiter who was mildly attractive considering the small town like this one that they were in, smirked at me with a sensual smirk that said, I'm going to bring you your dinner and then some dessert, of which the dessert was an innuendo for explosively violent sex. <laughs> your face on that. Uh, I'm going with contest. You're going with contest. I'm okay. going with contest. I don't think you're that good. That was me! Nah, that was me, it, baby! I'm, I'm playing that clip. I don't think you were that good. Cut to it was me, baby! Let's go! I, I'm taking that. It's, that's going to be a medal. I'm going to make that medal. You're not that good, says Richard. Yes, he is this one time. <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great, terrible line for Thanks. parody. I honestly think you should write a parody book. Just a small novella of, like, this is the worst thing I possibly could write. <laughs> Man, you're so good at writing horribly, Austin. It's just such a talent. Thanks. If you just do the opposite, <laughs> just think about what you would do and then do the opposite. Inverse it would be amazing. It. Yeah. I'm with you. Do you want to hear once more that? You know it's yes. fine. Okay. The waiter, who was mildly attractive considering the small town like this one that they were in, smirked at me with a sensual smirk that said, I'm going to bring you your dinner and then some dessert, of which the dessert was an innuendo for explosively violent sex. <laughs> it's just... That could be in a real book too, <laughs> like a a very a very bad a very bad romance ro book. Yeah, like a smut romance though. Not oh, because don't yeah. don't muddy romance books like that. It's like a no. I think even smut romance fans like they you know that that's kind of that that's more of your extreme romance. Like you're hey we're reading a quarter. It's not romance. It's smut. Exactly. Don't, we don't want to don't muddy them. Don't okay? merge the two. That's like people that say ah fantasy. It's just like figurines and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a terribly awful line. Thanks. I'm, I'm so glad you shared that. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what is your seventh line? My seventh line. Yeah. Okay. Oh, by the way, that's three you got wrong so far. I know. We're tally, put the tally up there, Austin. <laughs> I'm terrible at this, apparently. <laughs> All right. Her ragged breath audible throughout the home as she lay collapsed on the foyer floor. A tall, well-tailored, ghastly white gentleman asked her at her front step, Surely it's not too much to invite me in for a cup of tea. Say it once more. Okay. Like, let, me, let me get in this. Her ragged breath audible throughout the home as she lay collapsed on the foyer floor. A tall, well-tailored, ghastly white gentleman asked her, asked at her front step, Surely it's not too much to invite me in for a cup of tea. I'm go this is either yours or real. That's okay. I'm going to let people at home guess. Oh, I don't know which way to go. I really don't. I'm going to go real. Is it real? Incorrect. It was mine. Damn it. <laughs> Damn, that's two I got wrong now. Damn it. I can see it. That's good. That's good. That's good. 
<laughs> so say once no, for now that I know it's you. Put yeah, you okay. In that frame. Okay. Her ragged breath audible throughout the home as she lay collapsed on the foyer floor. A tall, well-tailored, ghastly white gentleman asked at her front step, Surely, it's not too much to invite me in for a cup of tea. What, what made you come up with that? How did you think of that line? Oh, I, I was just thinking of a scenario of overly explaining a very simple concept, like trying to... Th- Trying to, I was trying to make something that could be a real book, but is bad. Yeah, so I wasn't trying to go overboard. I, you, the, you the wanted, first one, you wanted me to think it was a real book. Exactly. Yeah, the yeah. first one, like it was either me or the contest. Yeah, this because one's it's either over explained. Yeah. So I was trying to muddy the line in between a little yep. bit. So this could be a real book, but it's a little over explained. Like her ragged breath audible throughout the home. Like she lay collapsed on the foyer floor. Like it's just exactly. a bit too much of an explanation. Or it could be real. That's why I thought real book. Exactly. Could be you, but uh, you tricked me. Mm-hmm. Damn it. Damn <laughs> it. All right. You're... I'm, I'm going to get you. I'm going to catch up. <laughs> Three to two right now. Three to two. Yeah. Three to two. All right. Here's my seventh one. Okay. Okay. Penelope Marsha Meredith Rupert Smith III was a large woman in every sense of the word except for her breasts, which were shaped like juvenile's pinky toes. Though she wouldn't say that herself because, after all, her name was Penelope, not James. <laughs> Do you want me to say it once more? Yeah, okay. I need it one more time. Here we go. It's, it's a word. It's oh, no. Penelope Marsha Meredith Rupert Smith III was a large woman in every sense of the word except for her breasts, which were shaped like a juvenile's pinky toe, though she wouldn't say that herself because, after all, her name was Penelope, not James. That's a real book. It's a real book. That has to be a real book. <laughs> that was me. Damn it! That was me! That was, um, I, that was me! You're doing most of them. <laughs> that was my third one, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that was my third one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also, I tried to stack them in a way that was hard to guess. Like, I didn't go, like, yeah, yeah, fake, yeah, yeah. real, fake. So I tried to make it. That's really good. I like that. Like, but her <laughs> name was Penelope, not James. Like, what? <laughs> well, no, because, again, like, James would say that, not Penelope. I right. get it. Yeah. It's overexplained. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and confusing. I literally had to read it. Like, you had again. to read it to me twice for me to understand what was being said you know the only time we've complimented each other is when we've written bad lines like you're so good at being awful Richard. you're so terrible no you're worse than me no 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 no, no. you're worse no, no. rich stop no you... no no if you could have an award it would be the best award for being the worst okay, no let me be humble for a second just let me do this okay uh-huh. and let me give that to you honestly i am only second place in terms of awfulness the first belongs to you. That's really kind of you, but I do not accept. <laughs> that, that is that is yours for sure. What do you guys at home think? Like, is Austin the better worst writer, or am I the better worst writer? It's the most backhanded compliment ever. <laughs> <laughs> There's no winning. <laughs> Whoever wins loses and wins. Yeah. Uh, okay. You give me your eighth one. Okay. Here we go. The frequent and robust bouts of coupling that young Liam shared with his robot girlfriend, Esther 4.0, while satisfying, often reminded him of eating chocolate-covered cherries without removing the foil wrapper. Oh, man. That could be any of them. Yeah. That's a good pick. Say that once more. Okay. That I don't know. The frequent and <sighs> robust bouts of coupling that young Liam shared with his robot girlfriend, Esther 4.0, while satisfying, often reminded him of eating chocolate-covered cherries without removing the foil wrapper. I'm going to guess you. (laughs) Incorrect. That was the contest. Damn it. That was a Greg Homer in Diamond Springs, California. Well done. Well done. So that means we both got three wrong now? Both got three wrong. We're tied. We're going to the final stretch, tied up. It it yeah. We each got three two wrong. Two more. Um, no, three more. Three more. Yeah, I Am have I missing something. I th- I think no. I have three more. Yeah, or I might have double did one. Or I may, I have an extra one just in case. There you go. Use that so. extra one. Okay, here we go. This is my eighth one because that was yep. your eighth, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, you got two more. I have three more. That's why. Understood. Because we can't do numbers, right? Yeah. Okay. No. Here it is. After his seventh shot of Jack Daniels, Billy reflected that only a certain kind of man, 
a Roman Catholic priest, born under the sign of Gemini, whose loved one had been run down by a bus full of inebriated Lazio supporters on a glorious Sunday morning in early April outside a provincial church whose bells were ringing, Bach's Toccata and Fugue in B minor, would truly be able to understand the abyss of despair in which he was drowning. You don't understand music? That's the contest. Here's how I thought I would trick you. It is the contest. <laughs> 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 I thought I would trick you because you know Hyperiod's first line is... Yeah. Is Bach's like in whatever B minor? It wasn't Bach, but okay. Rachmaninoff. It was Rachmaninoff and you C minor. Exactly. <laughs> it was Rachmaninoff. And how, where's Hyperion on here? Do you have Hyperion over there? I think. Wait. Oh, uh, where? What side not, is it on? We don't have Hyperion on the shelf. What? What is this? Wait. That's like your. Wait a minute. That's your nope, favorite. We do. It's oh yeah, here, yeah. But it's under all the books. Ah, uh, uh, it's worth it. It's okay. worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to read it? Yeah, I want to. The first read it. line from Hyperion, how beautiful this is. This is why I picked this I, line. By the way, this was the 2016 Grand Pension Drums Special Award. So. I actually s- saw people on Reddit that actually thought this line was terrible. I know. They're so wrong. I, There's, here it is. Terrible. Opening line to Hyperion. The hegemony console sat on the balcony of his ebony spaceship and played Rachmaninoff's prelude in C sharp minor. On an ancient but well-maintained Steinway, while great green Saurian things surged and bellowed in the swamps below. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect opener. I love it. I'm, it's not my favorite book. You love it way more. It's yeah. Not a bad book, but it's the opener is fantastic. It's a great book. Yeah. Okay. Give me your ninth one, Rich. We got two more each. Oh, it's mine? Okay. Two more each. All right. All right. It was the, tw- it was the 27th year of Day's death. In the realm of the Forever King, and his murderer was going to die. <laughs> his murderer was waiting to. I'm gonna say one more time. It was the 27th year of Day's death in the realm of the Forever King, and his murderer was waiting to die. Contest. Incorrect. No, is it real? Empire of the Vampire. <laughs> oh no. I'm losing. I know. No. <laughs> well, I lost the lead. <laughs> Damn oh, look. It. So for people that may be in the comments going like, yeah. oh, that isn't the first line. It's the first line of the chapter. There's like okay. some prelude, like, you know, that little poem thing yeah. before chapters. This is the first line of the first this, chapter. What book is this again? Empire of the Vampire. Of the Vampire. Several of our patrons actually recommend reading this oh. book. Apparently, it's a pretty good book. People it's got like, a 4.4, 4. 4. 4.36 on Goodreads. People like the book, That's, but... That but the line is line. terrible. Oh my god, that's awful. I said, I said, contest right away. Immediately, say, say the line once more. It was the twenty seventh year of the day's death in the realm of the Forever King, and his murderer was waiting to die. God, it sucks. Yeah, you know all the stuff you hate about the like the melodrama. Yeah, like. Empire of Silence did melodrama to me. Like, I liked it. You didn't like the melodrama of Empire of Silence. Mm. But, gotta admit, it's better than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But apparently, the book's great after that. Yeah, so. I hear it's good. <laughs> All right, here's my ninth one, Rich. You ready for this? Yep. <clears throat> Money is overrated, said the impoverished movie critic. Is that a real book? Is that your official guess? Yes. No, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say said the impoverished book critic, but that would have been too on the nose. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. I just kind of want I feel like that could be just a really I was, cheap self-published book. I was going for something like that. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't awful enough for the, for the contest. contest. Right. That right. was my thought. Yeah. Now you did the same strategy as me, trying to emulate Mo- the Most contest of them I tried or... to emulate the contest. That one I went for... Could this be in a book? Oh, okay. Maybe. But do you know what that means? We both got four wrong. And it comes down to this final one on who yep. wins. I have one more. Yeah, me too. Okay. So we'll see who actually wins. All right. All right. Ah. The swarming alien spaceships were tiny and very small, maybe the size of a blue spotted hummingbird. But the beings inside, about 40 of them, were quite huge about the size of oak trees, the secret being their micro-induction force field, which caused a reverse polarity in geospatial relativity based on the precise degree 
of spin in left-handed neutrinos. But none of this helped in getting their rental uh, wedding tuxedos to fit properly or be comfortable. If that's you, I'll bow down. <laughs> that, no, I will, I, will, I will get on my chair. I'll bow. That's contest. Please, God. Get on your... No, you're... Oh, right. thank God. <laughs> oh, 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 thank you. I, I, I put all my eggs in one basket. Okay, okay. <laughs> that screamed contest. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. I pulled a lot of the sci-fi ones. I liked the sci-fi first lines. They were just so much more fun. They are, that, that is fun, and it's so... It's such a strange opener and first line. Yeah. Was that one of your favorite ones? Did, did you like it when it was just over explaining the aliens and the beings and yeah, at all to be like trying to fit into their wedding tuxedo? <laughs> and maybe the reason you like it is because it's a positive mockery where you love sci-fi so much, and someone who wrote that line knows sci-fi well enough to make it funny and oh yeah, admirable pulp, in a way. The pulp culty sci-fi yeah. stuff is just funny to me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that means we're four, you got four wrong. I got four wrong. If you get yep. this wrong, I win. If you if you get this right, we tie. So there's no situation oh. where you win. Oh, it's terrible. How does that feel? I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it all comes down to this. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna focus. <clears throat> As the prosecution wrapped its case, Reynolds listened and knew he'd been foiled again. One more time for me. As the prosecution wrapped its case, Reynolds listened and knew he'd been foiled again. Could be any. It could be any. It's a it's a trickster. Want me to say it once more? No, no, no. Okay. People at home, try to guess what this one is. It's a real book. You're saying it's a real book. hundred <gasps> percent. Contest! Damn it! I win! I'm awful! <laughs> This is from the 2018 Vile Puns Dishonorable Mentions because it's a pun uh, where a, yeah, as, the, as okay. the prosecution wrapped <laughs> yeah. its case, he lo- he'd been foiled yeah. again. Raps and f- okay. And you love puns. I do love puns. Don't, I feel like that could be in a real book. It could be in a real book. Uh, uh, well, you just on our sign, I'll just have to be, I'm a loser. I'm Richie. I'm a loser. Goodbye. Bye, y'all. <laughs> you, you gotta say it. All right. I'm a loser. Yeah! <laughs> I, I won something. Hey, you can clip that for yourself. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>